Hi, I'm Trent with Pike Industries, and today I want to talk with you about our four-post, 400-amp copper bus bar. We designed this bus bar out of a need that we saw in the industry. A few years ago, I was doing a solar install in an RV. I was using a 3,000-watt inverter, and I was looking for bus bars to, uh, to make the install much cleaner, to provide an area for all of the wire runs to come to in the DC system. And I found these bus bars all over the place. Uh, they were very inexpensive. They usually came with a red and a black one. Um, they had covers that came with them. And so I purchased a set of them. And when I got them, I wasn't that impressed with the actual bus bar itself. Uh, let me show you a quick comparison here between our copper bus bar and the bus bar that comes in the competitors. Ours is a quarter inch thick um, and it's much larger. The holes are spread out farther to make it a lot easier to install ring terminals. But uh, just, the, just the thinness of the, of the bar itself concerned me. And then I learned that the bar was actually made of brass, not copper, which uh, heats up quicker than copper does. It doesn't conduct electricity as well. Uh, a couple other negatives about this bus bar is the bus bars are just held down with two screws uh, into the piece of plastic. So those can, those can give out over time. Also, the bus bar just has two mounting holes, uh, one on each side, which when you mount it down, it can have a tendency to twist on you. And the cover itself is, uh, is quite flimsy. So after seeing these bus bars, I thought there has to be a better bus bar. Um, there were much more expensive bus bars on the market that were over $100. They weren't really needed for a 3000 watt inverter. So we came up with the idea of a uh, 400 amp four post bus bar with a, with a piece of solid copper as the bus bar. And the reason that's important is with a 3000 watt inverter, if you run it on a 12 volt system, you're going to be at 250 amps, but most inverters will go over their specified rating. In some of the inverters, you can push them 50% higher, sometimes even 80 to 90% higher for a, for a short amount of time. So you really, you really don't want to rely on a 250 amp bus bar in a system like that, uh, especially a bus bar that is, that is as thin as these are um, and made of brass. So let me show you some of the features of our bus bar. It has four mounting places and we include the mounting screws to go in there so you don't have to go and find them yourself. It comes with a nice sturdy cover. I'll take that off. You can see the bus bar itself is made of solid copper plated in tin for excellent conductivity. So another feature is that we have widened the terminals on the bus bar to allow for MRBF fuses to be installed. Uh, especially if you have a large battery bank system and you are running separate wires from each battery or battery bank to the bus bar. You have plenty of room to mount multiple MRBF fuse holders on the top and then have your cabling going down to your battery for each of the different uh, components of your battery bank system. Makes for a real clean installation. Another thing I wanna mention is that the bus bar is fully rebuildable. If you damage any portion of it, the base, the bus bar, the terminal lugs, any portion of it can be swapped out and replaced. So that'll give you assurance in the future. Uh, the terminal lugs themselves are 5 16 and they come in two different grades. One is a grade five or better zinc plated, 
Uh, we also have a 316 stainless steel model as well. Now that's important because we went with the 316 over the 304 uh, because these are rated for a marine environment. Both of them are stainless steel and it's when you're looking to buy something that's going to be used in a boat or in a marine environment, even though it says it's 304 stainless, uh, the 316 is superior to the 304. So always be looking for a 316 stainless steel. That would include the terminal lugs, uh, the nuts that hold them on, and also the mounting screws. Everything is going to be 316 stainless or it's going to be the zinc plated grade 5 or better uh, hardware. So another feature of our bus bar as you can see it has this beveled edge. The reason we did that is a lot of terminal connections have the same beveled edge. It makes for an easy connection. Here let me take the, the net off of there first. You can see if you're just laid on there flat, it would stick up, making it hard to mount another terminal on there. But if you lay it flat like that, you can see how nice that sits and allows for more connections to fit on a, on, on a single terminal because of how flat that sits on there. Going back to the cover that we've included with it, I want to show you with these MRBF fuses. It's really handy because you can put these fuses on and still use the cover in place. As you can see, the cover does not interfere with the MRBF fuse. This makes for a really, really clean installation. And a lot of people are moving to using these MRBF fuses just because of how handy they are. And they don't require a separate external fuse um, that you then have to make another wire connection for. They're just built right in. Really nice. So there you have it, the Pike Industries bus bar. We're really proud of the design and all the features that, uh, that are in this bus bar. And when you think about your solar install, probably the least expensive portion of your install is your bus bar. Um, when you think about all the panels, the batteries, the inverters, the solar controllers, the wiring, uh, and all of it gets run through your bus bar. So don't try and save money. Don't try and save, you know, twenty, thirty, forty dollars on a on a bus bar because it is such a critical component to your whole solar installation. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.